Paddy Hogan's got a second yellow card and he's got a red and Kilkenny find themselves down to 14 men how will the 14 men fare? Richie Parr comes out looks to restore Kilkenny's advantage this one drops short James Scanlon oh he looks nervous he's left it behind again and Fogan is taken down that's a penalty it looks like the referee has got to give it as a free out let's just see this again James Scanlon is in difficulty seriously as you can see James Scow came out. No, that wasn't. He put his head down. The incoming forward, Aiden Ford, he went legitimately to try and get the ball. Hard to see where there was a foul. It's sad to see the way James Scow has come off. Clearly, very seriously distressed as a result of all of that. Can Galway respond immediately? John Dalton stepping into the breach here. Up towards Powell once more. This time Damien Joyce gets his hand to it. Out to David Buck. Well worked on by Tap. It's Patrick. It's back again. Into the forwards towards Tanyan. Almost ran on. Cyril Dolan's in after it. Out it comes to Tommy Welch. Oh, he's left it behind to Joe Farmer and Farmer steals it off him. A little pickpocketing there by Farmer. And it's over the bar. His ninth. comes towards Aidan Fogarty got a hold off Fergal Moore there goes John Tennyson that's another one Kilkenny go through the gears up the tempo Tennyson gets another and it's 121 to 120 all the way down it goes in towards the substitute Richie Cummins Cummins right across here When the ball goes out after this, you'll imagine that will be the end of it. Galway are still leading, can Kenny have a chance? It's over here with the captain, it's TJ Reid! It's saved by the goalkeeper, it's uh, still in play, and it's going to be a line ball. And the pressure will remain on Galway. The referee has blown his whistle finally, it's all over. And Galway win by a solitary point. What a second half. The final score, it's Galway 221 or 27 points, Kilkenny 123 or 26. John, there was some victory for you. Yeah, a great day for Galway, Ger. Uh, there were shades of the Tipperary match at half time, we're leading by four, and uh, then we're in trouble early in the second half, conceded a very avoidable goal, went five behind. And there was a feeling of deja vu there, to be honest. But in fairness to the Galway players, they learned from the Turles uh, experience. They dug in, fought really hard. We brought in a number of substitutes who freshened them up and got some vital scores. This is three matches lost in five now in the league. It's not the normal Kilkenny form. No, I suppose um, everyone, everyone is out to get, to get to Kilkenny at this stage. And um, I suppose that's a, that's a big blow to our league hopes. Um, I suppose we'll, we'll keep plugging away and um, it should be a long year yet. Yeah, it will. Hectic finish at Nolan Park, but Galway holding their nerve to take the points. Donald O'Grady, they were trading punches like heavyweights there at the end. It could have gone either way. Galway obviously just getting the win. Well, it could have, Michael, and, uh, you know, TJ Reid had a great chance to live there up. But um, I suppose Galway would have been very, very disappointed, Michael, mm. if they came home, you know, back to Galway there with a loss. I think they were the better team. And um, after the mistake by the defence to give away that goal, they sort of fell apart, as John McIntyre said. That. But, you know, McIntyre can take a lot of credit because the three substitutes they made, Richie Cummins, Kevin Hines and the other Italian, they, they made massive contributions to the win. So they just about deserved it, I suppose. We were talking to Tony Davis earlier on about Mayo and some of the things they do well some of the things they don't do well. Galway hurling is kind of can be a bit similar in some ways. Well, Galway were always, you know, a very stylish team to look at, right? But the problem is that they, you know, they do things very, very well, and then they compound it by giving away stupid fees and silly goals and whatever else. And you know, we, we look here at the situation whereby this Shane Kavanagh comes out, and you know, they have good support play here, and they walk the ball down the wing. Um, you know, Fergie Moore took the challenge there, moved away from it, and then um, uh, Richie Cummins was who came in and was very impressive. Yeah, ball in and. Tanyan held back here and went to the right time, went through then. I know um, Hogan had gone off for Kilkenny to full back and um, 
you know, maybe, maybe that was a, a contributing factor, but he did very well. So he went score two one, and you know, another one coming here, Richie Cummins takes John Dalton from the outside, and you know, does very well. Head up, has a look, and again, Tangan stands out so he can attack the ball. Not a great goal, and that's what brought Galway back into it. And you know, they fought from there to finish. But we we look here now at a situation where you know three Galway players in under the ball. Martin comes away, so simple scoring chance and you know if God we want to win all Ireland these are the things they'll have to learn uh, you know silly little mistakes like this and you know every time ball comes in now you know James Scale you, he should have kept going the way he was going the sideline is your friend head for the, yeah, the yeah. head for the corner flag if you're under pressure you know silly goal and God we really fell apart and James Scale he just puck out straight out to the Kilkenny man back in and they could have gone out of the game but in fairness to them as Jamak said like they hung in there and a very well deserved win for them in the end OK it was a defeat in Nolan Park for Kilkenny but Chaff Patrick said there afterwards you know, it is going to be a long year we, we probably know what's coming down the tracks and, and some of the things that Kilkenny did today are the kind of you know trademark stuff and they are because I mean the thing is they have, they have great support over the last five years they've built themselves into a great, a great team and Richie Paul was at the centre of all their good attacks you know held the ball up John Mulhall, who has been very impressive with them in the last three games, right? Yeah. Difficult angle going away from over the bar. And I think that's the hallmark of the Kilkenny team, is their support play. And uh, every time they get the ball, they look for a player. See John Tennyson make you run from left half back up to that's the 45 meter line, pointed, went to the ball like a, you know, like a premiership player, and stuck it straight over the bar. And um, you know, they were just nip and tuck to the final thing, and Aidan Foley here could have maybe leveled it. Goes for the safer option as he thought possibly TJ Reid, you know, with of arrogance maybe like he had to pass Damien Joyce and, and Colin Callan, who had come on for James Kelly at that stage and could have leveled the match. But uh, talking point coming up here in that, you know, James Kelly got injured and with all the light of that, you know, he slightly concussed, but wasn't anything more serious yep. than that. I, I, I felt it was a neck injury at the minute, but James Owens gives a free out. Very debatable, I think, you know, let me say, furthermore, takes down. Aidan Folk who knocks the ball into net so Kilkenny might be a bit aggrieved about sure. that one Yeah James I think might need a couple of aspirins going to bed tonight but apparently otherwise he will be fine Now a check on the scorelines in the Alliance National Hurling League OK here's Division 1 a spirited performance by Limerick not awarded with the points against Offaly Cork with three points to spare at uh, Parnell Park a draw then between Tipperary and Waterford and Galway with that single point victory over Kilkenny And here is the Division 1 table this evening Donald yeah, I think for the two top spots is between Cork, Galway and Tip and Cork have to play Galway and Tip in the in the forthcoming weeks. Limerick we knew were going to be relegated and I think the team that's going to be most disappointed was probably Dublin after the fine showing last year. OK, on to Division 2. Antrim beaten by a late score for a second week running. Westmead getting their first win of the campaign and Wexford bouncing back from last weekend with a win over Kildare. Clare just edging it at Dr. Colin Park and Leash with a clear win over Down. And I looked then, Donal, at the Division 2 table this evening. It was always expected, Michael, that Clare and Wexford were going to end up in that final, but Leach have been going very, very well, and uh, Carlo have been going very well as well. You yeah, know, I mean, they, they won last week, just beaten by a point this week, and they, they'll be happy that they're very, very competitive. OK, fair enough. This is Division 3A. Kerry beats Armagh. Derry with a one point win uh, against Meath, and London with a win against Mayo and Castle Bar. Well, Kerry it is who win the campaign in that division with the top spot. In Division 3B, Wicklow beat Roscommon by two points, Sligo overcame Donegal and Fingal with a huge win over Tyrone. Well, Wicklow the only county in that division with full points so far. And in Division 4 then, Monaghan had a two-point win over Leitrim, Longford hit four goals against Fermanagh and Cavan came out on top against Southdown. Well, those results mean that Monaghan ends Division 4 by claiming the top position.